tape is part of the Middle Tennessee Oral History Collection designated as MT 2000.176. This is Betty Rowland. Today is Friday, July the 3rd, 2003, and I'm interviewing Richard Palmer in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. The tape of this interview, along with the transcription of the interview, will become part of the MTSU Oral History Collection and will be available to the public. Future researchers may include portions of this interview in their publications. Is that all right with you, Mr. Palmer? That's fine. Okay. Let's just put some things on the record, and that way I'll get to see how your voice is picking up. Uh, I'll ask you to state your full name and your date of birth. Richard Houston Palmer the third, uh, October 17th, 1909. 1909. Boy, you've really seen some things, haven't you? I have. Now, your father would have been Richard Palmer II and your grandfather Richard Palmer I. Quite right. a long line. That's right. What did your father do for a living? He, far he farmed and traded. Traded? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, uh, he managed my uh, mother's first cousin's farm, who was Dr. Jerry McFarland. My mother was Bertha. McFarlane, and they were first cousins, and uh, I grew up in the house that my mother was born in. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, where was that? Where was that house? Where? Uh-huh. In Wilson County. Oh, okay. On, on the Cold Square Pike, five miles from Lebanon. Oh, okay. Okay. Was and it a large farm? It was 200 acres, and... Uh, we lived on one side of the road that sat back about like this house does from the from the road, and uh, Doctor McFarland lived across the street, right opposite us, mm -hmm. and and that partnership uh, lasted for 25, 30 years. Did you have chores growing up? Did you have to do chores on the farm? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> what What was your job? Well, we were six children. Really? Three, three boys and three girls. Where did you fit in that lineup? I I was number two. Oh, okay, okay. My I had one sister older than her. She was two years older. But you were the oldest boy. I beg your pardon. You were the oldest boy. Right. So a lot of responsibility probably fell to you. Down the down the way, yeah. Yeah. I was really born in in uh, Texas. Uh huh. In uh, Palo Pinto County. Never heard of it. <laughs> well, very few people have. But uh, my uh, my my mother and father, when they married, he went to Louisiana and worked in the uh, lumber logging industry. Uh -huh. And my oldest sister was born there. And uh, then he went to he went on to Texas and uh, worked as a tenant farmer and, and raised cotton. I was born in Texas and my next brother, who was two years younger, was also born in Texas. And uh, how old were you when you moved to Tennessee? I was uh, I was two years old. Okay. My brother was three weeks old. My goodness. And uh, I, I don't remember. My earliest rem memory is when we we moved into this house in which I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I was three years old. My goodness. Time. Well, that's a pretty early memory. Well, it is, and it's it's kind of faded and and shadowy. Uh huh. Well, tell shadowy. me. Tell me about growing up on the farm. It was rough. I mean, uh, we had no uh, running water. We had no electricity. We had no insulation in that old house. It was cold in the winter time. <laughs> I bet. Hot in the summertime. Uh, there were cracks in it 
the, the old expression was you could throw a cat <laughs> through the cracks. <laughs> uh, oh, me. The house was was built in a, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but but the boys' room was upstairs, and and we had to go out outdoors to get up there. The, uh, oh, really? The uh, I don't know whether whether that section of the house was built at a later date or not, but uh, anyway. We, we never had any heat in, in our, where we slept. Uh, and uh, if the snow was on the ground, we had to wait in the snow to get into the living room when we came down from the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. What did you raise on the farm? What crops? Well, we raised the general thing, except uh, we didn't grow cotton. Okay. We, uh, we grew tobacco. That's hard there, work. There's a there's a line that where cotton stopped and tobacco started. Uh huh. North and south. Uh, the only crop that that I participated in was my brother, my old my brother James, who was two years younger, and I put in five acres of. Uh, tobacco one year. I was, we were 16, 17 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of high school. Uh, and, uh, and raising tobacco is a, what is called a 13-month crop. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you had to prepare the seed bed to raise your plants and and that's where that extra month came in. Right. Uh, it, this was in the very depth of the bad depression. Well, I wanted to ask you your memories of the depression. Oh, uh, nobody had any money. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, later on, I worked in the bank, and and we were still feeling that that depression. Uh, the average, the, the uh, pay scale on the uh, for farm hands was fifty cents a day. Fifty cents a day. My yeah. goodness. From sun up till sundown. It. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a long day in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. It was called from from can to camp. <laughs> from can to camp. Okay. <laughs> from daylight to dark. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I worked. I worked uh, on the adjacent farms at times for 50 cents a day. My goodness. Uh, but anyway, this this tobacco crop we put in uh, was was hand labor. I mean, it was really it was really rough, and I worked in it all the summer. And and in the fall, I got a, an opportunity to for a job in, in uh, town, and uh, I don't remember if that is when I started working in the bank or not, but uh, anyway, I was I could make $10 a week on, on a job in town, so I took it and uh, hired someone for 50 cents a day ah. to, to finish, furnish my part of the labor when they went to, to harvest and, and prepare the tobacco plantation. My goodness. And uh, we sold the crop for a nickel a pound. It now brings three or four dollars, maybe five, I don't know. Uh, I did not get enough out of that tobacco crop to pay the person that I had to hire to have harvest. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness. That that was one thing. We milked cows and and uh, we sold. Uh, we separated the cream from mm -hmm. the milk and sold the cream. Uh, when Model T Fords came along, my dad bought one and uh, and uh, they had long running boards 
And uh, did you ever see a car with a running board? I believe I have. Do you know what a running board is? Well, I, I may be wrong on the terminology. Is that the little, it's kind of like a little stepping yeah. on the side of the vehicle? Right. Where you, you could step up? Yeah. I need one now to get in my Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we had this Model T Ford, and, and my dad put, uh, he put some leather buckles where he could, he could set five gallon cans of cream on that running board and buckle them on there. Oh, they must have been rather wide. Were they, the they were they were 12, 14 inches. Oh, I haven't seen any like that. <laughs> uh, so he could he could use his his Model T car to haul his milk cans. Right. My goodness. And we had them on each side. <laughs> <laughs> Here he goes down this gravel road to five five miles into town hauling that cream. Oh my goodness. And we we built a little building with a concrete floor in it and, and a separator that you turned by hand. That was part of the daily chores. Uh, and we 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 fed the skim milk to the hogs. Uh huh. Uh, I bet you had a garden. A garden? Yes. Yes, we had a big garden. We, at, at that period, and I would, I would estimate that we might have spent three dollars a month for food for the, from a grocery store. All we bought was salt and pepper and a little coffee. No, nobody drank coffee as I grew up, except my mother. And that was a luxury, I guess. Well, it was, yeah. So everything else you consumed, you We produced. raised on that farm. We lived off of that farm. My goodness. People don't know how to do that today. <laughs> we, we killed 10 big hogs in the fall, and, and, and we ate that. We lived... <laughs> I don't know how we all got to be 50 years old. We ate, we ate ham and lard and, 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 and the most unscientific diet that you can imagine. Well, you know, I've thought about that a lot. I mean, that used to be the standard diet. It's amazing that anyone made it, as you said, to 50 without clogged arteries because that's what you lived on. That's right. And... Uh, and my my grandparents on my mother's side, the MacFarlane side, died in their fifties. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother on the Palmer side lived to be ninety six. Uh, all eating the same diet. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess there are things we just won't ever understand. Things we, we won't understand. Tell me what you remember about uh, World War II. We, there were a lot of maneuvers up your way, weren't there? Do you remember the maneuvers? Oh, I do. Like it was yesterday. Well, tell me about it. Well, uh, they took over Wilson County. They, they, uh, they, they took Cumberland University. Is that where they were headquartered? Right. Okay. And uh, and uh, and th and they they used the farmland for maneuvers. If they wanted to go across a farm, they just burned everything and 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 uh, estimated it and paid the farmers. They did pay for damages. They oh yes, every, every one of them, and that got to be a racket. In some instance, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> the values people put on an old rotten rail fence. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me. The maneuvers, there were thousands, thousands of, of uh, soldiers in Middle Tennessee, Murfreesboro, too, for that matter. At, at one point, we were 
already in Murfreesboro and uh, in in the uh, produce business. My my younger brother and I uh, and and we had a little little shotgun building down on Vine Street. And and when ever ever month every month when they had payday to to the soldiers. They 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 just swarmed Murfreesboro. So you were already in Murfreesboro at that by point. Then. Yes. What brought you to Murfreesboro? On Vine Street, one block off of the square. Yeah, but why did you come to Murfreesboro? Why? Uh huh. Because I had worked seven years, and uh, this this question was in that interview the other day. I had worked seven years in the Commerce Union Bank. I had a wife. And uh, I don't know whether I had one one child or two. I may have had two. No, I think it was just one. Anyway, I had reached the magnificent salary of seventy five dollars a month for seven years' experience in a in a bank, and it was a small bank seven employees, and we performed every function that a New York bank would perform. I got the best education in banking. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> but uh, really, I did everything in that bank except loan money. Uh, and I, jan I, I worked as janitor, too, sometimes. My goodness. Uh, we had a flood once, and the water got waist deep in that thing, and and I cleaned it on the weekend just to pick up some extra change. My goodness! So why did you decide on the produce business? Well, I had gone to uh, at that point in my life, I had I had attended the University of Tennessee for two years and one year at Cumberland University, and. Uh, that's as far as I got in college. Uh, let's see. I've, I've lost it now. I was I was asking why you went into the produce business. I had a friend that uh, was a fraternity brother at UT. Uh huh. And uh, and he was in the produce business in Lebanon. Oh. And uh, and there was, and I was working in the bank, and there was a five cent hamburger joint right across the back door of the bank, and you could get two hamburgers and a Coca Cola for fifteen cents. Oh my goodness! No tax. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and I was sitting in there on a stool one morning, and he came in and sat down beside me, and we talked, and and he said. I, I need a truck driver. Do you know where I can get a truck driver? I said, when do you need him? <laughs> he said, in the morning. I said, I'll have you one there. What do you pay? He said, $10 a week. Uh, so I sent my brother. He was at home twiddling his thumbs. He, he, you, you couldn't get a job anyway. Really? And uh, so he worked. This was James, my brother, that that we were partners in. Uh-huh. Uh, he worked for Kel Lester for two years, I believe. And he learned that business. And and he thought there was an opportunity in Murfreesboro to open a place of our own. So he asked me uh, to uh, come to Murfreesboro with him and go in the produce business, and we did. Was it a tough decision? Ma'am. Was that a hard decision for you to make? Well, it was, yes, but uh, I wasn't getting anywhere in that bank. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, when, I, when I told the boss, who also was a family co cousin, uh, uh, that I was quitting at a certain 
so I gave him two or three months. And uh, he didn't believe it. He said, what are you going to do? And I told him. And uh, anyway, we, uh, James had borrowed $250 from a bank. My, my dad went on his note. And I had an insurance policy, New York Life Insurance Policy, that had about $250 cash value. Mm -hmm. I cashed that insurance policy and got $250, and we came to Murfreesboro with $500. My goodness. And, uh, now, where was, your where was your first business? Where did you say it was located? On, on Vine Street. One block off the square, you you went through Maple Street, right straight on across the square mm -hmm. to, to Vine Street. It was on the right at that first intersection, just a short block from the square. What's there today? Do you know? I don't know whether, whether anything is there or not. I think that area of Vine Street is gone. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, tell me what the square was like. Tell me what it was. Tell me what it was like on the downtown square. I think I read that was in 1939. That's right. So what was what was Murfreesboro like when you came to Murfreesboro? Well, uh, two or three days ago, uh, Red Victory, who lives up here on the corner, mm -hmm. did you ever hear of him? No. Okay, he knows more. You, I, I want you to interview him. Oh, okay. Write him, write, write him down. Okay. Red Victory. I'll get you his telephone number. Okay. He, he calls me every now and then. We talk for an hour over the telephone about old time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If you had one of those tapes. <laughs> <laughs> I could just tape your phone conversation. <laughs> Uh, really and truly, we we tried to put together the uh, the square and the businesses that were around it uh -huh. in 1939, and and we got most of them located, except one one we could neither neither one of us think of. What kind of businesses were there? What kind of what? Businesses were on the square. When we came to Murfreesboro, there were probably three or four grocery stores on the square. Really? Uh, there were 65 or 70 mom and pop grocery stores scattered over the town. Uh, just, uh, just a little shotgun thing with uh, no electricity, no, well they may have had electricity in 39, I'm not sure. But we didn't, our, our business was operated in just a, a, a bare room on Vine Street. No, just a, if there was electricity, and there must have been. Yeah, I know there was. The, the uh, one bulb hanging. One bulb and pull a string. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, no. we, we, our, our M.O., was was to uh, go to Nashville with a pickup truck and get a load of fresh vegetables off the square uh, up from the from the, uh, the 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 fresh produce. The supplies in Nashville generally ha handled one or two items, mm -hmm. and and there were all kinds of sources to to buy fresh vegetables. And uh, on the square for six or eight months the farmers market was on the square in Nashville and and, and, and we worked off that. Oh you would buy fresh produce at the farmers market yeah, in Nashville? Right. And then you bring it to Murfreesboro. We'd, we'd get back to Murfreesboro about I would go down at three o'clock in the morning and, oh my goodness. and and get a load of fresh vegetables, and uh, we would have it sold by seven o'clock. Now, where were you selling your fresh vegetables? Here in Murfreesboro. 
to the mom and pop stores? Right. Did you sell directly out of your building to people? Could I have walked into oh, your place yeah. and bought? Yes, ma'am. So you sold directly to customers, but then you sold to the all those 65 or 70 mom and pop shops? Right. Too. And that, and that was it. And, uh, and you say it would be gone by what time of the day? About 7 or 8 o'clock. And, and then we would go eat breakfast. <laughs> 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 we would mostly be through by that time. My goodness. Uh oh. Well, there was quite a demand. Quite a demand for fresh produce then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, most of these little retail outlets grocery stores would would they would have maybe 35 40 customers and 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 people families bought their groceries from a from one of those kind of deals well you, you didn't have the big uh, you didn't have the big grocery chain everything was small wasn't it I remember when HG Hill came to, to the square they came on the square? Yeah, and put a, put a store on the square, I must have said. Where was their building located on the square? About Do you remember? Uh, right, at, right up uh, on the uh, west side of the square, just four or five buildings from where we were on Vine Street. Really? Uh, do, do you remember Tommy Martin? Yes. He came here from Athens, Alabama, as manager of an H.G. Hill store. Oh, that's what brought him to Murfreesboro? Yeah. I only knew him in insurance. No, he got into insurance later. Oh, okay. Uh, were he, th were he was such an outgoing person. He, he wasn't in Murfreesboro long before he knew half the people. He <laughs> were there restaurants on the square? City Cafe and... Uh, you know, that's the only one I recall. It was on the uh, south side of the square. CBRNS Uncle Rand's. <laughs> uh, you know CB. Yes, I've interviewed Mr. CB. Yeah, I know. He told me. <laughs> uh, where were we? Oh, we were talking about what was on the square. Oh. And and how your business served? Did you uh did you sell to the to that city cafe? Oh yeah. Uh, just certain items. Mm -hmm. uh, Hollis Westbrooks. Didn't you, was you he remember, a mayor? You later? remember Hollis? Yeah. That was B and W Grocery, and it was pretty close to the city cafe. On the on the south side, and Hollis Hollis ran that grocery store uh, and things were cheap the the only fresh vegetable he he uh he rented the, the uh, a corner of the front of that b and w grocery store to a, to an old gentleman uh i've been trying for weeks to remember his name and I haven't come up with it uh, and he bought he he had the produce business he had a little area about about, about from here to here to there uh, and, he, and he, he must have paid Hollis maybe ten dollars a month or something to, to retail in that in that area and uh, but Hollis sold the big stuff like cabbage and sweet potatoes and Irish potatoes. And, and you brought all that in? Yeah. And there were there were other grocery stores on the square. Uh, there was Mr. Lamb on the... You need to talk to Red Victory. What did Mr. Victory do? He was... Uh, his... First, one thing he did was save his money. <laughs> uh, he he uh, did uh, water and sewer and that sort of 
work. Uh, he helped build streets. Oh, really? Uh, he did the curb and gutter concrete work. Uh huh. For most of the streets in Muscle Uh, he, uh, You're talking about Red Victory. Right. Uh, you were, you mentioned Murfreesboro Bank and Trust. Okay. Murfreesboro Bank and Trust called Red one day and said, uh, we've got some stock available. Somebody has died or something, and they, and he, and, and you've got $100,000 up here on savings account, not drawing any interest much. You ought to buy that stock, and and uh, he bought it for a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, <laughs> I, I over the years I've asked him. I'd say, Red, what is your stock worth? And he'd tell me how many million dollars. And, I can imagine. And uh, so Murfreesboro Bank and Trust was there at that point in time. Right. They were there. Because they've changed hands, they're now SunTrust, right? right? So right. that stock is oh, doubled. They've changed hands twice, I think. Yeah, that stock is doubled and doubled again and doubled uh, some more. He has still got that stock. Really? And My goodness, from all those years ago. And he gets dividends every year for more than he paid for that stock. <laughs> that was a good investment. How many banks were on the square? Uh, the Commerce Union was there. Uh, my next door neighbor ran it. Uh, I can't say his name. I, I think I wouldn't have been. He turned 90 the other day. He would know. He would be a good source uh, from a banking standpoint. Mm -hmm. He. Uh, tell me. Uh, tell me about the square. Was it busy? You know, now they complain that no one will shop on the square, but. I understand. I've talked to people who said that, uh, like on Saturdays, the people would come in from the country and the square would just be full. Oh, yeah. And it would stores would stay open late. Do you remember that? I do. What was we, that like? We had every little town, Lebanon, Murfreesboro, uh, had, had certain days that that they, uh, but they had a mule day and uh, At Mule Day in Lebanon and and in Murfreesboro and Columbia were three of the biggest events in the in the area. I've never heard of Mule Day in Murfreesboro. Tell me about it. Well, I, I can tell you about it in Lebanon better than I can Murfreesboro. Okay, but what did they do on Mule Day? They they traded. <laughs> oh. They brought their mules in that they wanted to sell. And and they and and everything else stopped and, and gave way. They 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 had charge of the square. And in Lebanon, General Hatton was in the middle of the square with an iron fence around it. Oh, the statue of General General Hatton. Okay. A, a, a Civil War veteran. Uh huh. Uh, it's still there. Uh, you couldn't walk on the square for the mules. Oh my goodness! Oh, uh, you couldn't park. Nothing attempted to park on the square, and uh, and they stayed there all day, and and the the manure was that deep on all over the square <laughs> when they when the day was over. Oh my goodness! And uh, they did that in Murfreesboro also. I think they did. Columbia had the biggest one. Uh huh. But but Murfreesboro had a had a mule day too, I think. My goodness. I'm not sure. My goodness. My goodness. Well, we were talking about the maneuvers. Yeah. Okay. And you said that um, when the when the soldiers would get their paychecks, did they come to to your company then? They 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 came everywhere, and uh, we were still in this little shotgun building and uh, I, I remember a guy came along with a 18-wheeler loaded with watermelons out of Georgia 
and uh, on a they they were gonna payday was on Saturday and he came he happened along on Friday and my my brother was out of town and and I was there by myself and I bought that load of watermelons for I don't know hundred dollars or something uh -huh. with the provision that he leave it parked on the street in front of my place for Saturday for the soldiers. Uh-huh. And and uh, and I sold those watermelons myself one at a time the next day to these soldiers for a dollar apiece. And uh, Oh and, goodness. And and it was a banner day for the for the produce business. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it would be. So you did good on that trade, huh? Uh This is sort of, a, uh, it's a joke that I remember, in, but it but it really happened. I was coming out of Nashville uh, with a load of produce about daylight, and there was a soldier standing on the highway in front of the garage, and I picked him up, and he was drunk as Katie Bryant, <laughs> and uh, he got in and shut the door, and I said, and I said, where are you going? He said, Murfreesboro. I said, what are you going to Murfreesboro for? He said, I want to see my mother. And uh, then he fell over against me and went to sleep. <laughs> and I locked the door and pushed his head back, and he just lay, lay there until I got to Murfreesboro. And I backed the pickup in, and uh, we unloaded it and filled all our orders and got all through with the day. And he still hadn't moved. <laughs> so we had to make our deliveries then. So I had to get him out of the pickup. And I got him out and carried him in, in the place. And he sat down on the, on the floor and leaned back against the wall and went out again. And two or three hours later, we got ready to go to breakfast or something anyway. I had to get him out of there. And I shook him awake, and it, he woke up, and he stood there and wallowed. And uh, I said, if you'll tell me where your mother is, I'll take you. He said, she's in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, you told me she was in Murfreesboro. <laughs> he said, hell, did you think she's going to stay here forever? <laughs> Soldiers were from everywhere, weren't they? They were. They were. And my mama fed them. She fed them. She, Dad said said she fed them every ham he had for the winter. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, my goodness. My, my other brother was in the Army, and he was in uh, Honolulu. Uh, Pearl Harbor. He was in Pearl Harbor when they bombed it. Oh my goodness. And uh, Did you know he was there? Oh yes. And then you heard about Pearl Harbor. That, that's right. And I and it was on a Sunday uh -huh. and I had taken the pickup and gone to Nashville to get a load of produce for Monday morning. And uh, I walked in a in a place to, to uh, buy something, I don't know what. Everybody was gathered around a little radio about the size of that. Recorder? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it was still going on. And uh, I stood there and listened at it and, and, uh, and, and all at once, <laughs> I, 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 I stopped and said, my brother <laughs> is out there on that one. Oh my goodness! How long was was he okay? Oh yeah. How long was it before you heard that he was okay? You must have had days of wondering. Oh, we, we did have days. That, uh, there was no you couldn't communicate with anybody on mm -hmm. that. He uh, he was in Schofield Barracks 
and that Schofield Barracks is still there. It was a two or three story barracks. Uh huh. And he had he had gone down the second story window, out the window on a sheet, and gone to town the night before. Oh. And <laughs> he was out to have a good time. Oh, he was he was wild as a. <laughs> anyway. He said that thing woke him up that next morning, and and a plane came right down the street, right beside it, beside the barracks, machine gunning. This, he said he picked up garbage cans with those machine guns and, and walked them down the street. It was that shooting that low, firing that low. Yeah, he was standing in the window. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! He got home five years later. My goodness. Well, now, how did you go into the service? How? Yeah, when? Why? <laughs> what happened? Do you really want to know? Yes, I do. It'll take me a little while. Okay. I, uh... Now, you're married. I'm married. And you have children. I have two children. Uh-huh. I'm 33 years old. Right. It's kind of surprising. And, uh... Three months after they drafted me, they quit drafting anybody that old. But are you familiar with how the draft operated? Every, to every, some degree. Everybody in, uh, every male in the United States had a number. Uh-huh. And, uh, and they, they theoretically drew them out of a hat. The order in which they would be called up and you either, you had a high number or a low number or mm -hmm. something. Everybody knew what their number was. And I had a high number. My brother had a low number. And he was not really eligible because his wife had tuberculosis. And uh, they weren't about to take him. So, and I, I was, I had registered in Lebanon. Yes. In Wilson County. Uh-huh. And I knew everybody on the draft board by that first name. And uh, they, and my number came up. And, and, and I, I went over there. We, James and I had bought a farm out. I'll tell you about that later. Uh, and my dad tried to get me to move out. There. They weren't taking farmers. Uh, that would defer you? Defer me, yeah. Uh -huh. And I said to him, I'm not going to do anything to be deferred. If they call me, I'm going. And they called me. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife was, was pregnant with, uh, well, Nancy Jane, who lives, uh, joins me on the back back here, and she's 55 or 60, I don't know. Uh, I don't think she ever get forgave me for, go <laughs> for going to the, to the Navy. So she was born while you were gone? Right. My goodness. While I was in boot camp. My goodness. I'd been in about six weeks. When did they, when did they call you in? Do you remember the year? Forty-two or forty-three. I was in two years. I'm getting emotional. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was an emotional experience. In the war. Yeah, emotional time. To have to leave family and well, it it was rough, uh, but uh, now you say you were in the navy. I was in the navy. Yeah. Did you choose that, or is that where they placed you? <coughs> I chose it. I chose it as a, a, a. I selected it as opposed to going to the army. <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen enough army on these maneuvers. Uh, 
one of the one of the senators and one of the House representatives was in the mind when we went to we went to Chattanooga to be inducted. Uh, but uh, was some I mean, pauses. Now, and, and I'm going to turn this back on. Uh, you say it was Albert Gore? Yeah. He was in your line. Yeah. And, and, and they had a, this was your first contact. Uh, they had uh, uh, a Navy and a Marine and a soldier mm -hmm. selecting inductees. Uh-huh. And, uh, and but they would give you a choice. They would ask you if you wanted the army or the navy or so forth. Yeah. There's a great big stout, eighteen year old boy in in front of me. And they asked him what he what he preferred, and he said the army. And and uh, this army officer turned around to the navy officer and said, "You haven't had had a pick." <laughs> And the girl, why don't you take it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that boy turned white. He he didn't want any part of that navy, but he sure got it. Oh my goodness! Uh, that was a, that was the choice that you had. Uh, so you chose navy. I I chose the navy, and and Albert Gore, I think I'm straight on this, was right behind me. Uh, Did you know he was a politician? Yeah, he was in Congress. Okay, you recognized him. Yeah, and and uh, and all three of these military people came to attention when 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 Gore stepped up. Uh huh. And they they assigned him to the army. Two weeks later, they withdrew it. He never did go. Yeah. He went as a uniform correspondent of some kind. I don't know what. I think. Well, what about your experience? Well, my my experience was uh, uneventful as far as any enemy contact was concerned. I never never fired a shot at at the enemy. But uh, well, what was boot camp like? Boot camp was was rough, really, because of my situation at home. I would have enjoyed it if if I'd have been 18 years old, no responsibility. Uh huh. Uh, Where did you do your boot camp? At, at Great Lakes, Chicago. Okay. Uh, from uh, below zero to six above. Oh goodness. Snow, snow was four or five feet deep. So you went in in, in the winter months? Yes, ma'am. I went in in uh, I think in December. My goodness. You think uh, I, I could I could tell you a story about about my first recollection of boot camp. Oh do, please do. They, uh, first place, they put a thousand of us in a, in a, in one room, uh, a gym, a gymnasium, mm -hmm. big gymnasium, mm -hmm. and, and, they, and we were just jammed in there, and they gave us this aptitude test, you know, they, just to see what you, anyway, they graded them. Uh-huh. And uh, and the, and and the results of those tests uh, had a great deal to do with what you were assigned to. And uh, I took that thing. Just just went through it. It was a, it was a, choice. You you. You, they, like they'd have four or five statements, and oh. and, and you you picked out 
which one you thought was true. Uh, just multiple choice. Multiple choice. Uh -huh. that's right. And I just I just checked them. The, the first thing popped in my mind, and I made the highest grade in the. I think they were a thousand. Yeah. That, 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 that. Oh my goodness. And the postmaster from Wilson County was in there, and he made the second highest grade. And there was a, a teacher from Castle Heights Military Academy made the third highest grade. My goodness. Wilson County's looking good. And uh, they wanted to commission us all, give us an outright commission. And uh, I don't know whether any of us took it. I, I, I refused to take it. Why? My brother-in-law was in Washington, D.C. He'd been in the Navy six months, and he was had gone to storekeeper's school, which store, the, the rate storekeeper uh, was, was really uh, uh, financial stuff, not, not actual storekeeping. But it was an old Kingsley English Old English Navy. So it was sort of bookkeeping. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, that's 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 right. Uh, Is that what you wanted to do? Well, I, I wanted to uh, to get stationed where he was and have my family up there. Oh, of course. He was, he was living off the base, had for them and and. Uh, because he was just a, an apprentice seaman, but but uh, uh, he, he, he had a good job. <laughs> and I thought if I went to storekeeper school, I could get something like that somewhere. Yeah. So I, you were more interested in getting your family with you than making a career out of this. Right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I just refused it. They wanted to send me to OCS, officers training school. Uh, then, then the next guy they wanted to send him to the guy from Castle Heights, and uh, he he dived in the pool one day and pulled <laughs> pulled something in his back and they discharged him. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, Paul Reddy was his name. My goodness. Uh, well, what did they assign you to do? They finally assigned me to a school, storekeeper school in uh, in New Jersey. They had three drafts. One was one was for New Jersey. One was for Akron, Ohio, and one was for uh, uh, a, a base in Florida. I got New Jersey. Uh, they, they, they put us on a train and blacked out the windows, locked the doors, and we stayed on that train five days. My goodness. And, uh, and we wound up in New Jersey, <laughs> went up through Canada. I, I don't know. I, don't, I never understood that, but that was right. Old World War I coaches. They weren't cleaned up or anything. If you whatever you touched, your hand be black. Mm -hmm. And they would they would tie uh, Pullman Pullman car on periodically to to feed us. Uh huh. And and uh, and and that thing was immaculate. And and they would uh, they would. Uh, serve you sitting in the seats. These waiters with white starched thing, everything and my uh, goodness. napkins that big square. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good food. Well you know people have told me that the Navy had the best food. Did they you have did, good food? That is right. I, I didn't miss many meals in the Navy. Uh, but we we were we were black. My, my face was black. From the soot? From just from the dirt in that Pullman. Oh my goodness. 
and we had one little head. You know what a head is? Rest, that's the best bathroom? That's the restroom, restroom in the Navy. Uh-huh. Uh, one little head and no way to bathe, no way to take a shower, no way to do anything. And we stayed on that thing five days. Could you sleep? Did you have, could you lay down? Slept nothing. You could lift that seat back. Just in the seat. So there were no berths? No. My goodness. My goodness. Well, when you got to Akron and got in school, was your family able to join you? I didn't get to Akron. I got to New Jersey. Oh, okay. oh I'm sorry. Okay. And, uh, and, and, no. My wife and my oldest child visited me at one point while I was in New Jersey, but but that's I couldn't even get off the base. Oh. Uh, I I could get a day, but I couldn't I couldn't stay overnight or anything. So. Hmm. How long were you there? That course was about two months, and. Uh, at the end, toward the end of it, I decided that I had made a mistake not taking that commission that they offered me in boot camp. Mm -hmm. So uh, I applied for, for a commission on my own. Uh -huh. And uh, I, had to, I had to fill out a bunch of stuff and I had to get every signature on the base to recommend me and, and all the shit. Uh, and I got through that. And uh, about a month later, my brother-in-law in Washington called me. And he, and he, I answered the phone and he said, well, Lieutenant, how are you feeling? I said, where well, you get that, Lieutenant? He said, you'll find out in a day or two. And it had come across his desk in, in Washington. Oh, my goodness. So I, 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 I served. Then I had to go through the other service schools as an officer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I went through gunnery school, and I, I, I wound up my first My first sea duty was as a gunnery officer on a on a freight freighter. Not a not a navy ship. The 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 navy put guns and and gun crews on on uh, privately owned mm -hmm. freight freighters, mm -hmm. and that's the duty I got. Now, where was that in the Atlantic? In the, in the Atlantic and uh, and in the Pacific, I, I, uh, I picked up my ship in New Orleans and went through the canal into the Pacific, mm -hmm. and uh, and went went west, I guess, twenty degrees off of the equator. We n we never saw another ship, and. Uh, well, they were losing. They were losing those freighters early on, weren't they? Oh, oh by the hundreds. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they decided to arm them. Well, the, uh, they. It was long term. I mean, it was early on decision. They sent some freighters uh, to sea with mock guns on them, and 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 gun crews. Mock guns. Imitation guns. I mean, they weren't real then. No, they weren't real. What were they trying to do? Just give just so the enemy would would uh, maybe uh, back off a little bit. Oh, but, really? Yeah, they they they. they uh, Let me get another tape. Well, my good, I I've ne I didn't know that that they would put fake guns on. Oh yeah. I, I talked to a lot of officers that had gone to sea like that. My goodness. What was your highest rank when you got out of the service? Were you a lieutenant? 
I was I was a junior grade lieutenant, and uh, after I came back from the Pacific and and I was being discharged uh, in New Orleans, and uh, and there was a an old. Uh, Enlisted man, sergeant of some kind, handling me. And, and he, he looked at my record and he said, if, if you'll stay over till the middle of next week, I can discharge you as a full lieutenant, which is equivalent to a captain in the army. Uh huh. And I said, son, I wouldn't spend the night. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> to be discharged of. Full lieutenant. So you were discharged as a junior lieutenant? Uh, yeah, my, my record showed that, yeah. And all your service was on a freighter then? It, well, I had two different ships. A Liberty ship, you said. Right. And uh, when we got to Honolulu, the Japs surrendered. I bet you were glad to hear that. Well, uh, <coughs> um, let me... Let me modify that a little bit. I was in Panama when the going through the just before I went through the canal that the Japs surrendered. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I checked into the naval base there and uh, the word had just come. Mm -hmm. And the commander of the base had uh, stopped issuing any passes, nobody could get off of the base, or nobody could get on the base unless they had business on the base. So, uh, and, the, and and he, he opened all the, the uh, cantinas and everything, everything was free from beer to whiskey. So there was celebration. And, uh, they were celebrating, I mean, everybody was drunk, and I was trying to check in, and and this colonel or general or captain or something looked at me all glassy eyed and said, You're sober. <laughs> I said, Yeah, I'm sober. <laughs> but I finally got checked in. And and then the next day I, I got back on the ship and we went went to uh, Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And I got off the ship in, in Honolulu. What did you think about the bomb that was dropped? What What did you hear? No one had ever seen or heard of anything like that before. Did you understand? I, all I understood about it was that, that it killed maybe half a million people, mm -hmm. or maybe a million people, that it wiped the whole city off the face of the earth. Uh, and they dropped two. They dropped another one two mm -hmm. or three days later mm -hmm. on another city. Mm -hmm. But no one knew what to think of that, I'm sure. No. There'd never been that kind of destructive... It just crystallized mm -hmm. the whole thing. People, people, bodies were not... Just, they, thousands of them were just disintegrated. I mean, mm -hmm. there's nothing to identify them at all. It's horrible. How did you stay in touch with your family? <laughs> well, my wife wrote me every day. Every day. I hear, I hear so many people say that. Letters written every day. And uh, I tried to reply, but I faked a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, write, I'd sit down and write a week's letters at the time. Oh, my goodness. And oh mail them. Yeah. Did it take long to get the news? How old was the news when you would get her mail? Well, when I was in, uh, in uh, the Philippine Islands, really is where I wound up and got off the ship, uh, my sister sent me a, a cake and a in a coffee can, big two and a half pound coffee can. Uh, it was a fruitcake type. Uh huh. Thing. 
I got it six months after I got home. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I think they say fruitcake lasts forever. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask, how long did it take for you to get out of the service once the war was over? When did you get home? When were you discharged? I was, I was, I was discharged. I came home on a, on a, a personnel freighter, uh, a, a, a Navy ship, U.S. something personnel, mm -hmm. built just to transport men. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a 16 or 17 man gun crew. We all got on that same ship. And uh, I had, I had, uh, I had to select one of my gun crew to leave on the ship that was going on to, to Australia. And I worried about it for two or three days, and finally some kid from New Jersey said, I'll, I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> that took a burden off of me. But, but to, we had to go through all this legalized stuff to turn all the guns and the ammunition and everything, which I was responsible for, for him to be responsible for. Uh -huh. and, uh, and and we, we boarded ship. And, and uh, we had the officers' quarters were separate from the men's. And, uh, it was just like country club treatment. Really? Uh, three meals a day served on immaculate white linen cloth tables. And, uh, anyway, and my, my, my men would pass by the window. They could look in there and see me sitting at the table. <laughs> <laughs> and they would tap on the window. <laughs> they were going down and go through a grub line. The distinction between officers, officers and men was a lot more uh, delicate than it is now. I mean, the, the, the enlisted people, there was a line they couldn't cross. You yes. Know? Well, when did you get out? I think it was in, in, in the elect about 10 days being in there two years, and I think it was uh, in, in December that I got out. And it was December when I, when I went in, two years later. December of 45, you think? Yes, 45. Um, what was happening to the business while you were gone? Well, I... Uh, well, before I before I let you tell me that, did you you said you didn't give any consideration at all to staying in the oh, service? Oh no, no. You were on your way back to Murfreesboro. Right. Okay. So. As fast as I could get. There. <laughs> so what had happened to the business while you were gone? Six or eight months before the draft, when the when uh, really before the drawing, we we were. Pretty well established and 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 making money, and and uh, and we agreed, my brother and I, that if one of us had to go, the other one would stay there and run the business, and and we would participate equally in the earnings. He would draw a salary comp complement to what I would draw in the service, uh -huh. or he would draw in the service. And we had that verbal agreement, and that's the way it worked out. Hmm. So he continued to run the business while you were gone. And I, the only time in my lifetime I've ever saved any money. When I, you were in the service? Yeah. <laughs> the, the business made money. Uh-huh. Well, tell me now, there were a lot of shortages after the war. Oh, yeah. Did that hurt the business? Well, no. And, and there was a lot of ways to get around it. And, uh, Tires? Pe people and cheated on it. And, uh, you know, you could just sell. You could, well, we had, the prices were frozen. 
we had a a limit that we had a price that we could get on say a hundred pounds of potatoes and uh, and it was against the law to charge any any more than that to the to the uh, it, it was uh, the different steps that it took to get to the retailer mm -hmm. was that was that to protect people after the war from things just going crazy it, it was to keep people from gorging uh-huh just being outlandish on uh -huh. on potatoes and uh -huh. onions and cabbage and uh -huh. all of those types of things oranges grapefruit well, tell me the changes that you remember in Murfreesboro and Rutherford County when you came back from the war. After World War II, what kind of changes do you see in the community? From being gone two years? Yes. Not very much. Really? Everything is about the same. So when do you really begin to see the growth and things? The growth? Uh-huh. I, I, uh, I am not good on dates at all. I, uh, I know I, in our business, the, as I told you in the beginning, we, had, we started with $500, and, uh, and we, there, there was a little shop on the square run, run by a, a uh, one boy, and uh, and after we'd been here six or eight months, his w business got so bad that we we hired him. He we hired him and his pickup truck uh -huh. for fifteen dollars a week. He didn't have much business <laughs> on square. Yeah. And later on, we 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 hired a a, a, a woman up there and closed up another fruit stand. Uh, we began to grow about uh, two years after after the war, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, we started buying property and I was I was uh, interested in farmland, and uh, and uh, before I went to the to the Navy, I had bought a little farm over in Wilson County that from my dad, mm -hmm. and and he looked at it for me while I was gone, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but before I got out of the Navy, he wrote me and told me he could, he could sell it for maybe a thousand dollars more than I paid for it, and he'd like to sell it. He was tired of fooling with it, and I wrote and told him do whatever he wanted to do. So mm -hmm. he uh, he sold it. Uh, James and I had bought a a farm in. Uh, about six or eight miles from town, a uh, little over 200 acres, and we'd paid 10 or 12,000, and uh, and James wrote me and said he'd like, I, I had covered it up with cattle before I left. James wrote and told me he wanted to sell it if we could make a couple thousand dollars, so I told him do whatever he wanted to, so he sold it. Uh, recently, one of my men that, that had worked for me 30 or 40 years died, and I went to his funeral. And as I came out, a man followed me. And uh, he said, are you Dick Palmer? And I said, yeah. He said, uh, I own a farm that, 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 that you all own. And he said, I remember having to send the papers overseas to oh my goodness. get them signed. I said, do you still own it? I said, yes. I said, what's it worth? He said, I've been offered $8 million. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, I was going to say, if it was five or six <laughs> miles out of town then, it's probably right in the middle of town now. Where <laughs> was right. it? Where was it? It was out, out, out on the, I can't think of the street name. It, it was about four miles out from town. You turned off of a, a bridge, and off of the road at a bridge, and, and went back in. It had water all the way around it. Hmm. Had a stream of water all the way around. My goodness, it's probably right in the middle of town now. It's worth eight million. <laughs> well, it it is it is. Uh, I I I don't know that it is open, but uh, or undeveloped. I don't know, mm -hmm. but 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 he said he'd been offered that for it. Tell me about industry in Murfreesboro. Industry. Uh huh. In Murfreesboro, was there much industry when you came in 1939? I think there was a, on Vine Street, there was a, some kind of a mill. I know in in Lebanon, we just had a, had a, had a woolen mill made, made woolen cloth. Mm -hmm. Was there a cedar industry here? That cedar bucket? Yeah. <laughs> That was here, wasn't it? Yes. That's not, that's not, I'm not getting that mixed up with Wilson County. No, no. That, that, uh. Were there cotton gins in Murfreesboro? Oh, yeah, there were, there were, I would guess there were eight or ten cotton gins in the county. Everybody grew cotton. But now after the war, do you remember new industry coming in? Yeah, yeah, that paper stayed full of it for years. Uh huh. Courting people, and trying to move it in, and and uh, and and it was a big deal when we got an industry that would employ two or three thousand people. Mm -hmm. Well, now I read in the paper that you have been in the Lions Club for sixty years in Murfreesboro. That's right. So tell me the history of the Lions Club. It sounds like to me you ought to be able to tell me. When did it, when it, did you form the Lions Club? The Lions Club had been in existence when I went in, probably eight or ten years. Uh, Dr. Nosley. The dentist, isn't it? Yeah. Is he a dentist? Lived, lived to be over a hundred. Uh-huh. Just died in the last few years was an original member of the original Lions Club. Now what was what was the purpose of the Lions Club originally? Well, I am not certain but but I think it, it was eyes mostly. Mm -hmm. I know that after after I got in it most of our uh, benevolence was toward blindness. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and we did a, a a a great deal of work, a lot of work. The Lions Club, the Lions International, is in all forty or fifty foreign countries, and and they all concentrate on uh, blindness. Mm -hmm. uh, what attracted you to join the Lions Club? Why did you join? Because uh, Wink Midget asked me to. You know who Wink Midget was? He taught out at the university, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, coached out at the university. Tell me about him. About Wink? Uh-huh. Wink grew up in Watertown, Tennessee. Uh-huh. He was the best athlete in, the, in Middle Tennessee. He uh, played football at uh, Cumberland University. He uh, married my wife's second cousin, uh -huh. Nell. Uh, he he moved to Murfreesboro, moved to the university about uh, a year, maybe before we did, maybe two years, and was on the staff out out at out at the university. Uh, Never got a doctorate, but he, but he stayed there and taught in that university till he retired. Uh, he he was uh, 
as I said, a football coach until they had two or three bad years and they fired him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, uh, I remember one night at the Lions Club shortly after he got fired up there. We had, uh, we, we, we decided we, we didn't know one another very well that, and that we need to have, a, have the members identify themselves uh, when they called the roll. Uh, and uh, anyway, when they got to Wink Midget, Wink stood up and said, uh, Wink Midget, ex-coach. <laughs> <laughs> It, it really hurt him. I mean, it, it, it took the life out of him for a while. Was football a big deal? Oh, yeah. It was at that time. Yeah. It is now. <laughs> In some places. Yeah. <laughs> so you joined the Lions Club because he asked you to. Yeah, James and I, my brother, and I uh, joined, joined the club. It, it was fun. And, uh, and, uh, well, tell me about some of your projects in the Lions Club. Well, as I said in that article you saw in the paper, our first project was, was naming the streets, putting, putting street signs on there. There, there wasn't uh, any way you could identify from driving down the street what the name of the street was, or any of the cross streets, or any, you knew East Main, West Main, and, <laughs> and North and South. That's just hard to imagine. And uh, I don't know, I think we spent about five thousand dollars putting up those. Those we named every street in town. We d we didn't name the streets. We identified the streets and put up the signs. Put up signs. Hmm. Put a put a post and, and, and you know, you know how they are now, uh -huh. same way. Second project was uh, buying uniforms for the Central High Band. Really? They didn't have any uniforms. And, and we paid for that. We, we, we were stirring up the neighborhood all the time. <laughs> And uh, we sold, oh, the, the Lions Club International fostered the blind school in Nashville, and they made brooms, and they and I think they still make brooms, but but we sold brooms from and mops. We had three or four items, uh, and we sold them door to door. Once a year, and 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 uh, people people look forward to it, and 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 it was easy to handle. We divided the town up and and uh, just spread out all over town with these brooms and mops, and, <laughs> mm. and you'd carry a broom and a mop on your shoulder and walk the streets and knock on the doors. Uh, I wasn't very good at that, but. <clears throat> well, now the Lions Club has a nice building down by Cannonsboro. Yes. Now. I built it. You did. I, I, I'm, that is, I will modify that to say that, uh, that, uh, oh, that, they, uh, I can't think of it. Guy's name. Anyway, I'm going to show you my cabin before you leave. That's where that picture was made. Oh, okay. Uh, I had built that cabin. Here on? Here. Uh, for the tape, for those people who can't see where we're pointing, here by your house. Right. Yeah, okay. And uh, Mayo Westbrooks, I couldn't say. Uh-huh. Hollis Westbrooks and I. Uh, I I don't want to say I instigated that cabin. 
but I almost did. Mm -hmm. Hollis and I planned it. Uh, we sketched it out on the back of an envelope or something, and uh, and 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 we 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 modeled it after this. Uh, this, out here. this one here is your house. You already had this one. I already had this one, mm -hmm. and and uh, bought the same logs and all that I had used in this this one. And and uh, we hired one carpenter. And I don't remember. We we uh, we contracted out the. Plumbing and lighting. No, no. Uh, Jim Baker put in the wiring and the, uh, we built it. the Lions. The, the the members of the Lions Club built that. My goodness, I didn't uh, know that. Uh, put the roof on it. Oh my. Uh, and uh, and we sold. We financed it by selling notes to the members of the Lions Club. Almost every person in the Lions Club bought, loaned, loaned the club money, took a note for it. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, we paid them interest, I think at 5%. And, uh, and we we did projects like fish fries and that sort of thing. That was pretty pretty well. That went on pretty big for several years of uh, monthly fish fries. Sounds like it was a labor of love. Well, it it was hard work. Mm -hmm. uh, but but it, but it sounds like it was something that you really wanted to see happen. Right. You got involved in the. And you. Now, uh, Mayor Westbrook is pretty much uh, the reason that we have Cannonsboro, isn't he the reason? That you had what? Cannonsboro. Oh, yes. He, he's the daddy of Cannonsboro. Well, tell me about that. If well, you knew him, I mean, how did, how did that come about? What was his dream? Well, it was down there, uh, right back in the Lions Club mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, I don't. Oh, I'll pause this. Well, let's let's talk about Cannonsboro. Well, I I don't really know much about it. I I, I was not involved in it at all. Well, why? Was I watched it go up. Yeah. Why was he doing this? Did he share with you why he was? Uh, Mayor Westbrook. Yes. He he just uh, he loved old things and uh, and old history and uh, he just wanted. To preserve some of the early uh, way people lived. Uh-huh. Was he from this area originally? From uh, in this county, yes. Okay. Out, out in the county, though. Mm -hmm. Not in Murfreesboro. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Bottoms? The area they call the Bottoms? Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. I've seen pictures. Well, it, it was just a, a, an, an area that that black people lived in in the most ramshackle living conditions you can think of. That, mm -hmm. that was the bottoms. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really was a, a blight on the city. Mm -hmm. They moved that out in the 50s, didn't they? Uh, 50s and 60s, yeah. Uh -huh. But it it came right up to the where we where we were in Vine Street. Uh-huh. Right next door was a was a black woman who lived in a house right there. Do you remember Mink Slide? Yeah, oh that that's where we <laughs> that's where Farmer Pro Produce was in Mink Slide. <laughs> really? Right on the edge of it. Uh-huh. Tell me about Mink Slide. Well, I've heard that I, I've heard where the name come came you, from. You've what? read you've read CB's book, haven't you? Well, yes, but what are your memories of Mink Slide? Was it was it a busy area? It was it was a 
sort of a rundown area. It, it was, uh, there were cotton gins and that all around it. Uh, I mean, yeah. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. Well, now, I've been told that the name came from the fact that they sold hides there. Sold what? Hides, mink, hides. Oh, and, oh. Is that true? I don't know. You don't know where the name came from? No. I think maybe that, that was a, a saying that was probably known all over the South. But in the old little town, I think, had, a, had an area called the Mink Side. Oh, okay. Uh, something else that happened in, in uh, Rutherford County that was, when I look back through the old newspapers, it looks like it was a big deal. General MacArthur came to Murfreesboro. Do you remember that? Very well. Tell me about it. Well, he, uh, we had a, we had a parade. Come on. Cut. We were talking about General MacArthur coming. Yeah. They had a parade, and uh, well, you, you're, you're aware that his wife came from Murfreesboro. Yes. Jean uh, Faircloth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a sort of a county fair parade with the horses and mules and, you know, teams of mules. Uh -huh. And, and, uh, and uh, old antique cars and just everything, and they carried him from the square out to the university to the football field. Uh-huh. And uh, had loudspeakers and, and he made a he made a speech. And and my and, and that picture of the football field and General MacArthur was on the front page of Life magazine. And Edna and I, my wife, were in it right Oh, uh, really? <laughs> I was going to show it to you, but I can't find it. My goodness. My goodness. I hope it's still here somewhere. Oh, it probably is. Uh, tell me about, you mentioned a county fair kind of thing. Tell me about county fairs. County fair, uh, county fairs were, were big deals in Wilson County and Rutherford County. They were just like a days ago, I'd say. They Where was it located in Rutherford County? Out on the Shelfville Highway, on somewhere out there on the right. About how far out? Do you know? Because I, I, I'm having a time seeing it in my mind. Is it further out than Jennings and Harris Funeral Home? Further out than that? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Out, out, out sort of on the where Shelfville Pike begins. I think I'm right about that. Out as far as the interstate? Or is that too far out? I don't really know. Okay. But they had a fairground. Oh, yeah. Now, did they have a racetrack? Do you remember a racetrack? I'm not sure. I've seen a picture or read something about a racetrack. I, I'm trying to find out more about it. Well, I, I, I told you in the beginning, the man you can talk to. Oh, Mr. Victory? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I will call him. But tell me what you remember about the county fair. I don't remember anything. Really? I don't remember ever attending it. Uh, really? Uh, I used to go back home to Wilson County and go to that fair. It's Wilson County Fair is still a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, they still have it, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what did the community do for entertainment? This community? Yes, Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Well, we had the country club for a certain a certain part of the population. Uh-huh. Uh, I bought a membership in it for $65, I believe. <laughs> and I sold it. I never did go. Uh, I, w I wasn't a country club type. And uh, I sold that thing for I don't know, $150, $200 uh -huh. membership. Uh -huh. uh, it's nice. I've attended to many functions out there, but uh, I, I, I never was an active member. 
simply because I, cause I didn't enjoy that type of thing. Okay. Well, I'm looking here at some of my notes. Do you remember other big things that happened? Hmm. I think we've covered just about everything that I had written down. I was I'll think of some of them after you leave. <laughs> I was just thinking as I drove out here, uh, you're out 231 toward Lebanon. This was way out in the country. Yeah, the, the, the city limits were at, at that little stream as you go back into town. On the and now we're, we are... We're three miles from downtown. Mm -hmm. And the city limit, I think the population probably was about 12,000 when, when I came over here. My goodness. You've really seen some changes. My first memory of Murfreesboro itself was in uh, coming over here to a high school football game. Oh, really? And, uh, and, and the football field was at, at the teacher's college. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the high school, I'm quite sure, did not have a football field. Now, is that Central High School? Yes, ma'am. And it would have been on Maple Street at that time, wouldn't it? Right. Okay. And, and, but uh, they played over at the university I, or at the college. At, at the state, at the, what do they call it? It was normal school first. Yeah. And then it was uh, state teachers. State teachers. College. Yeah. yeah. So you came over there? And there were no, there was no stadium, no, no field house, no nothing, just the field. Where did you sit to watch the game? There were bleachers, uh, all, all high schools, no high schools in the area had, had stadiums. Uh, there were bleachers that were Oh, 20 feet long and, and, uh, and stair stepped up mm -hmm. about 10 or 12 rows of seats. Mm -hmm. you, you could, four or five stout men could move one of them. <laughs> uh, and they were, they were just lined along the side line. And there were breaks in them. I mean, I think they were in sections of about 20 feet long and, and they would, they would leave about this much space so you could wander and you could go through it any most anywhere. Uh huh. Ninety percent of the no, take that but not that high. Half the people maybe could sit in those bleachers. The other half just they followed the football. Where wherever the line of scrimmage was, that's where the just like watching a golf tournament. Oh, they, the they they moved with the with where the action was. Oh my goodness. About half of them. Would there be big crowds? No, not 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 all that big. Mm -hmm. But but it was and it was rough. I mean you you if if Lebanon was playing over here they'd bring some bullies and and, and Murfreesboro would have some and fights were breaking out <laughs> everywhere. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh my goodness. You've really seen some changes. Well, I would say the last hundred years have been the, been the, been more changes than the, the last 10,000. Probably with all the technology. Yeah. We were talking about, while we had this tape off, I think, I was talking about reading the newspaper over the Internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want to see the cabbie? Yeah, I'd love to. Let me turn this off. Okay. I want to thank you officially on the tape for being willing to share these memories. This is just the, just the kind of information we're looking for. Thank okay. you so very much. Okay. And I really appreciate the names of other people to interview. I, I want you to, I'm going to tell Red Victory that you're going to contact him. I'll, I'll try to get his telephone number for you. Okay. Because his name is not Red in the <laughs> telephone book. Oh, I won't be able to find him then.